Hello everybody, it's uh, Mike Putman reporting from ACR 2024 for Room Now. Today I want to talk to you about an exciting abstract, it's number 2527, which was reported this morning during one of the plenary sessions. It described the efficacy and safety of nipocalumab, um, an anti-FCRN monoclonal antibody for Sjogren's Syndrome. I know, this is exciting. We don't get too many positive studies in Sjogren's Syndrome, and I think that we're at the beginning of a couple of them. So, you know, this is just a tough area. A lot of patients with Sjogren's Syndrome come to us, and they already have disease activity, they already have damage, um, and they've already become dry and it's just hard to recoup that. And so I think it's been a difficult place to do good research. But there's been a lot of progress in getting outcome measures that are functional and really getting excitement in the field. And I think that, um, we're starting to finally see some of the fruits of that labor. So. This is a, a novel an antibody. It's an anti-neonatal FC receptor monoclonal antibody. So I had to look this up. The functional thing that it does is reduce circulating IgG, which is an obviously useful thing for people who are in the business of trying to fix antibody-mediated disease. Sjogren's is obviously a disease with antibodies, so um, it's plausible that it would work. The caveat is that the Tractus trial, the TEARS trial, were both with Sjogren's syndrome, and there are officially failed trials, although there's enough there if you squint kind of hard to convince yourself that there might be something um, in it. Now, the study today was called DALIA. It's a beautiful name. They're getting better and better at naming these trials. Um, it was on SSA-positive patients with Sjogren's syndrome, which makes sense. The primary outcome was this uh, clinical SDI score at week 24. Also, that makes sense. We got 163 patients, so moderately sized. And what they saw was a dose-dependent decrease in the clin SDI. Um, you should check my Twitter for the graph. It's actually pretty impressive. You know, if you got the higher dose, you definitely did better. Medium dose, not quite better than placebo, but close. And then placebo did less well. Now, the thing that matters to me the most, though, is I think a lot of these outcome measures are kind of esoteric. And for the patient report outcome measures, they, they looked a little bit better. There's a numerical improvement there. And I think with a bigger trial, longer follow-up, it's entirely plausible to me that this would actually affect and positively improve the quality of life of patients with Sjogren's Syndrome. Now, IgG is useful, so if you're going to reduce IgG, you're going to have side effects. They did see some um, infectious adverse events. Most of them weren't severe. 3.8% of people who um, had a severe infection needed to get IV antibiotics compared to 2% of the placebo group. So, you know, more, but not terrible. There were no opportunist opportunistic infections or um, severe infections, deaths, anything like that reported. So I think overall the safety profile that you would expect with an agent for this. So what does this all mean? Well, I think this is good news for Sjogren's Syndrome. Um, I did think that rituximab should have worked, but it didn't, and it's plausible to me that there would be a benefit from something like this. Long term, are we going to be comfortable suppressing people's IgG for a disease like Sjogren's? I'm a little skeptical, so I doubt this will be used for everybody or as widely as I think people are hoping. The group that I think would benefit most is this subset of Sjogren's syndrome who has hypergammaglobulinemia. Those people often have a lot of fatigue, a lot of B symptoms, and I really think some of the hypergam, some of the antibodies that are being produced are driving their symptoms, and just reducing that alone I suspect would be beneficial. So um, there's gonna be a lot more to learn about this drug, but I just think it's exciting to talk about a Sjogren's trial that was successful. Thanks so much for tuning in to all of our coverage, um, and have a great day, everybody.